now we are on live ma'am good afternoon and namaskar to all parents guardians teachers and all who are watching this video brought to you by through centurion public school parla khemundi and i am your host speaker of today i am hemant kumar misra going to shed some light on the various aspects of national education policy 2020 as you all are aware about the launching of this national education policy 2020 in july 2020 and it was a much awaited and historical launching it is a historical event you can say as you can go through our history the first national education policy was launched in 1968 by our erstwhile well prime minister indira gandhi ji and thereafter the second national education policy came in the year 1986 and it was revised in the year 1992 by sri p v narasimha rao ji under his prime ministership and thereafter 32 34 years have passed and our education policy remained the change same and a lot of water has flown over the ganges lot of things have changed and it was much awaited and ultimately the present national education policy was launched in 2020 and it has been appreciated by all the stakeholders all the educationist parents guardians all over the world it has been appreciated one and all so now i am going to share some slides with you so that i can put forth my points in a effective manner to you so as you all know this is the national education policy and this policy is going to be implemented throughout india not only in government schools or cbse schools but all over all the schools and this is a very flexible one nothing is very very bounding on anybody so it can be a lot of elbow space is given to all the stakeholders so first we will see what is the vision of the policy so the first vision is to develop an education system deeply rooted in indian ethos because we have got a very rich heritage our tradition and traditional values are appreciated and held all over the world so we should be grounded to all our rich heritage and it has got a huge capability to give a quality education and it can compete in the world then the curriculum and the pedagogy must be so developed that it should give it should inculcate a respect in the heart and mind of the children towards the fundamental duties and the constitution of india and it also should build a sense of patriotism a sense of belonging so that a person is remains always grounded then one should have a sense of pride and respect towards own country and he should believe in human rights he should develop the qualities of empathy he should develop the quality of sympathy he should develop all the human values so that he becomes a good citizen and he should believe in sustainable development towards the world which every citizen has and he should be as our scriptures say vasudeva kutubakam so he should be a global citizen and everybody should have pride in own country in own tradition and own values and that is what the vision of the policy says now there are some key principles of nap 2020 now as you all know 
our country is a diverse one we are having a multilingualism multicultural society so we should not only have our respect towards the local values but also towards the diverse nature of our country and our pedagogy and curriculum is going to respect our diversity and a student should a child should take pride in that so that is what the nep 2020 aims for then equity and inclusion so equal opportunities should be given to all the stakeholders all children who are required to be brought under the education policy under the education system all opportunities should be given to them so that the framework of the constitution of india is implemented on ground then community participation so a school is not going to remain a lone entity only so it should get regular feedback from various stakeholders and communities like panchayats non government organizations district administration etc so that it is always on a continuous path of development and it can adopt various technologies as the society progresses then use of technology so in order to make ourselves competitive in order to make the education system globalized we should take the help of various technologies that are there available there so therefore even for the children who are differently abled or for slow learners various technological advancements should be adopted in classrooms so that they can observe the learning they can the teaching and learning process can be made more effective then the third one is fourth one is conceptual understanding so till now more stress was given on rote learning people used to students used to mug up various things various information and they have to reproduce those information in examinations but now more stress is given on concepts more stress is given on core learning so everybody is to learn and should be able to put those learnings those concepts practically in real life situations then you unique capabilities as we all know certain children are very very gifted and as also one of the most important aims of education is to identify the hidden potential of children and to provide them proper avenues for their growth therefore the school education should identify the unique capabilities of children and should try to foster those capabilities so that the capabilities that remain hidden in the child that blossom and they can achieve glorious success in their life then critical thinking and creativity so this is a 21st century objective of education so the children should know how to analyze any problem critically and how to solve various problems and they should also innovate and create so that is the ultimate objective of education and continuous revision so whatever the teaching learning process is implemented it should be continuously assessed so wherever it is lacking that should be put forth that should be rectified so that it is always on a continuous process of growth now there is a change in the curricular and pedagogical structure the present system that we know 10 plus 2 system of education that is a child spends 12 years in a school that is from class 1 to 12 and now there is a change in that policy the pre the system that is envisaged is known as 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 that is total 15 years so a child has to spend 15 years in school so you must be wondering how 15 years that means 3 years more in the school yes 3 years more but not after 12 before that means that is the pre school you can say so the 
education of the student child starts at the age of three. So he will be put in the preschool or play school at the age of three. And that will remain for three years. Then he will have Anganwadi. It can be implemented in Anganwadi or preschool or uh, Balbatika in whatever. So it will be implemented not only in private schools, but also in government schools. So it is mandatory for all. That is, first is nursery, then pre kg and upper kg. So three years is the that is the preschool. So this is basically a play method of teaching. So they don't have to learn anything, but whatever they learn, that is through the method of play only. And thereafter, two years as class one and two. So this total five years is known as foundational stage. So it prepares a child to go to the next stage, that is preparatory stage, that is class three to five. And the age at which a child entered this stage is eight. That is from age eight to 11. So here from class three to five, there is a transition of the child from play-based method of teaching to formal classroom. So here he discovers various activity-based teaching and learning and interactive classroom learning activity. So here he can experience a practical classroom and he can interact with all the children and the teachers and this way the teaching and learning method has to go on. And thereafter the next stage is middle stage that is from class 6 to 8 that is from ages 11 to 14. So here the child has to go through an experiential learning mode. Experience learning mode means here the child, child will learn by experience. He has to do something to learn. For example, he can do some experience in the laboratory. He can practically go outside. He can see many places. He can do vehicle mathematical quizzes, arts, social science, etc. And he can learn. And various subjects will be introduced to the child at this stage. And then comes the secondary stage, that is class 9 to 12, and the age is 14 to 18. And here, greater stress will be given on critical thinking, then multidisciplinary approach to learning, and flexibility in choosing various subjects. And here, the creativity aspect of the child is developed. And here, more stress is given on problem solving. Instead of simply rote learning, here the critical thinking is developed, then creativity is developed, and from a huge number of books to simply some core learning processes are developed in this stage. So this is the envisage that is from 10 plus 2 system to we are going to 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 system. Now, we are shifting, as I have said, we are shifting from rote learning or traditional learning to competency-based teaching, learning, and assessment. So what is competency-based? So here, a child has to develop some competencies. He has to acquire some competencies. For example, if you take the example of foundation level, then a child at the Class three, he should be able to write, he should be able to read with comprehension, and he should be able to do some basic mathematical operations. So that is the competency. So he should be able to acquire those competencies at the grade three level. And similarly, as he progresses from foundation to primary to middle and secondary, his critical thinking and creativity thinking, these aspects are nurtured and these are developed. And the system of assessment has also to change. So as you can say, it is the from rote learning to it goes to core essentials. So here you can see 
the number of books, the information that a children needs to just mug up. So here the ch child has to only understand various concepts and he should be able to put those concepts into use in real life situations. So the applicability or the how to put those in application that a child should learn. And there will be a continuous assessment of the child. Not only that there will be a periodic assessment or half yearly assessment or annual assessment. So here the assessment is not only of learning but also for learning. So whatever has been taught to the student that is also assessed and for learning means we are devil we are getting feedback whether the methodology that has been adapted is working or not whether it is effective or not and then accordingly some remedial measures are taken so it is a continuous process the assessment is continuous process and the child is always on the path of development and moreover the assessments and the content that is provided to the student is customized it is not same for everybody if somebody is very good at something then if somebody is gifted with some more mathematical abilities then his content will be different from the one whose mathematical abilities are low so it will be completely customized and a teacher is going to give proper concentration and care individually to each child and the and it will depend how the methodology is evolved so it should be very very interesting so the subjects are to be integrated with art it can be integrated with music various forms of art so that there will be holistic development of the children and they just get a joyful learning environment in the school so here i remember somebody told me that once a butcher was taking a goat to the slaughterhouse and at the same time a boy was being given taken to the school by his father and the goat was bleating very very frantically then the boy asked father why the goat is bleating so frantically then the father said actually he is being taken to the slaughter house for a slaughter then the boy says oh i was thinking he was taken to the school so at that time the skill the school was posing such a situation to the student and we must have seen small children they cry while going to the school but if the school classes are be, are becoming interesting and there is joyful learning then people the children will wait to go to the school when if they will say oh this is very bad that this is a holiday for today otherwise i could have enjoyed my day at the school so the school is going to be made like this children will love to go to school they will enjoy their learning there and they will learn various behaviors social behaviors through playway method in the school and here in their foundational level various motor skills fine motor skills gross, gross motor skills these are going to be developed in an ongoing manner they will enjoy by playing and simultaneously they will develop various capabilities so this is what the nap 2020 aims at Now, as I have already told you, some salient features of the various stages of the school. So foundational stage, so that is basically play and activity based. That is nursery, KG, upper KG and class 1 and 2, that is 5 years in the school. So here it is totally play based. The children will enjoy going to school and it is going to develop their behavior human behavior, good behavior, courtesy, ethics, personal and public hygiene, etc. And also teamwork and cooperation. They should know how to work in a team. They should know how to play, play in a team. So this way that will develop. Then preparatory stage, that is class 3, 4, 5, that is gradual transition 
from play based learning to formal classroom setting and here they will learn in an interactive method they will not be passive learners only they will interact in an active manner in the whole teaching and learning process and here various subjects will be introduced to the students in a gradual manner and here more stress will be given to the fundamentals that is reading writing and speaking then middle stage that is class 6 7 and 8 that is here there will be subject oriented pedagogy the pedagogy will not remain the same for all the subjects for example it will not be same for science and english or any language so it depends on the subject teacher and also the topic which is covered for example if he is going to see the architecture of something then he can be taken to an outdoor excursion he can be so a piece of architecture and from that he can appreciate the value of architecture or the form of architecture and those things so it is here in a discussion matter interactive method and practical and by doing an experiential method so the children have to experience and they have to learn so that that remain embedded in their brain throughout their life then the secondary stage so here it is a multidisciplinary study means they can take various subjects as per their choice and it is and we says that the stream structure that is you can say science then arts commerce various disciplines they are going to be removed and anybody can opt any choice of his interest for example along with science he can take any art subject he can learn music he can learn painting as per choice so he can take any subject he likes and here more stress will be given on greater depth and absorption of the subject core essentials and it should develop critical thinking creativity etc instead of simply rote learning you mug up something and reproduce in the exams and that is going to vanish here onwards and the assessments will be very very frequent so that the children can just rectify their shortcomings and also see where they can progress so it will be a continuous process then early childhood care and education the foundation of learning actually in a survey it was found that even class 5 children they are not able to write properly they are not able to do some basic mathematical operations like plus minus or multiplication so it has been the aim that at the foundational level a child should be able that is at the grade 3 level a child should be able to read with comprehension so he should be able to read and also understand what he is reading of course the content should be as appropriate up to his standard then he should be able to write and he should be able to do some basic mathematical operations so this is what the national education policy aims at and also simultaneously he should be able to learn some basic life skills for example he can choose his required items he should know how to keep personal hygiene he should know how to behave with others he should know how to communicate with others so these are the basic human skills so that also he should learn so here as i told you reading by reading the children learn many things their horizon of understanding and absorption of knowledge is enlarged to a large extent so from early childhood they should be made to learn something they should be made to read something so therefore national mission on book book promotion policy it says 
that every school should have a library and the children should go to the library and choose books of their interest and they should indulge in reading they should enjoy reading and at the grade 3 that is foundational learning and numeracy that aim should be achieved they should be able to read they should be able to write and they should be able to do some basic mathematical operations so this is the mission of the foundational literacy and numeracy mission that is by grade 3 they should be able to do all these things then a huge problem is there about the dropout rates so a lot of students join schools and they drop the schools in between so in order to eradicate those problem the present national education policy 2020 which was chaired by dr kasturi ranjan he had worked very deeply on this problem and he had taken views from various stakeholders various panchayats non-government organizations etc so one of the reasons for dropping out of the school is that the classes are not interesting people do not like to go to the classes they do not enjoy so in order to make the classes more interesting and there is joyful learning in the school so there is a shift from simple classroom learning to Playway method of learning. And apart from that, there are some other reasons are also there. For example, socio-economic reasons are there. So for that, some social organizations, philanthropic organizations, then district administration, and various stakeholders, they are going to play a role for that. And various other modes of learning, like open learning, distance open and distance learning and etc those modes are also be taken into use to make it universal education for all and here the school is also going to play a role for this when somebody some children are lagging behind or some children have left the school for some reason or other and they are approached by the teachers or by the non-government organizations and when they join again then they should be taken care of in a very very sympathetic manner and wherever they are lagging behind they should be made to come to the mainstream so that they take interest in their learning and they don't feel differentiated from others so this is one way of curtailing the dropout rates from the schools then there is a change in the pedagogical structure that is methodological of teaching so the main method of teaching here is competency based education as i have told you earlier competency based education means here the children have to acquire some skills not only information in this information age the information is available it is readily available one should know how to access those information and he does not have to memorize everything he can get it on the click of a button all the information but he has to acquire the competency the skill to assess the information so here the stress is given on competency he should acquire the skills as required for his class then he can acquire those competencies in an experiential method that means instead of simply getting bookings knowledge he should experience he should do and learn because as people say learning by doing a person can remember and if only he reads then he forgets so it is learning by doing so this way that is experiential form of learning this way the children will learn and that whatever they learn that remains embedded in their brain throughout their life and there is integration of various subjects so there is no compartmentalization that this is science class 
and it will be purely science only. No. So here there is no silos. There is integration, art integrated, music integrated, various forms of art can be integrated into mathematical mathematics while teaching mathematics or while you are teaching language, various other forms of art or science, anything can be integrated into that. So that it becomes a holistic development of the child. Then the most important is development of scientific temper. So whatever is spoken, one should not believe it instantly. So he should have a scientific temper of enquiry. So it should be enquiry based learning. He should find out on his own why this happens and why this not happen. For example, A plus B square, the formula is there a square plus 2ab plus b square but how it has come that he should know so this should be enquiry based for example the earth is tilted and therefore for example there are we are having uh, various types of seasons why this season happens what is the impact of the moon on our earth what is the impact of the sun on our earth so that there is change of various seasons so all this he should experience he should learn not only from the book but also by practical experience by performing various experiments by enquiry so it should be a subject should not be completely watertight compartment so it should be integrated with various subjects so and moreover language also so one should not stick to one language only if somebody has got a uh, fancy for some other language he can learn that language also. Even in this NEP 2020, there is a scope for the children to learn foreign language also. So, because as it is, we are in a living in a multilingual society. So, we should have respect for other languages other than the languages that we speak. And one, because our India is a treasure house of various languages, various cultures, and various things. So, one can just have to look into that. Now, 21st century skills. So the main focus is to develop the 21st century skills in the classroom so that the child remains competitive and he is ready for the world. He is not ready for the school only because ultimately after the, after the school, he has to go to the society. He has to go to the workplace. He has to mix with many people. So he should be made ready to face the world. So therefore, the qualities that he has to imbibe and develop are, for example, communication. He should be able to communicate with other people in various forms, spoken, written, etc. Then critical thinking and problem solving. He should be able to analyze a problem very, very critically. And he should, if he is able to analyze a problem critically, then he can find the solution also. And creativity, he should have the fancy, he should have the ability to innovate. Not just stereotypical, he should be some solutions from the out of the box. And that can be possible only through critical thinking then health and fitness and this is a 21st century problem he should know various aspects of preventive health diseases and how to remain fitness and he should be able to know the effects of mindfulness he should take proper mindfulness exercises and this is a present feature of the present school system also it not only makes one healthy, but also it increases their concentration level and also it makes them live life in a holistic manner. Then social responsibility. As a citizen, he should know what is his social responsibility. That also he should commit voluntarily from inside. Ethics. He should have good human values, good ethics. Then scientific temper, enquiry-based learning, project-based learning, not only simply 
memorization collaboration he should need know how to work in a team so that he can take various projects and can complete them successfully and digital literacy is more important very very important in the today's world he should know how to work in a digital atmosphere he should know various basic functions of computer and therefore from class 6 onwards there is a class for coding so people should learn how various simple forms of coding programming so that they the digital they should not only be digitally literate but they can also create simple programs softwares and problem solving so these are the 21st century skills which nap 2020 aims to develop in the children so apart from the traditional subjects that we are reading for example science physics chemistry math english or various languages etc some today's subjects are for example organic living how to we have live organically and how to grow organic crops for example holistic health data science artificial intelligence virtual intelligence so these are the contemporary subjects so one should take interest in these subjects also and one of the very very important aspects of nap 2020 is the vocational training so here there is all the branches that is curricular extracurricular vocational so everything is on a same footing and same weightage is given to all so from class or grade six onwards there is exposure to vocational training so in during some periods around some 20 periods in a year they can go that can be bagless classes so here they can visit various places for example they can go to a carpentry workshop they can see how the carpenter does various work they can observe electrical work or gardening or pottery making etc and here they develop not only they themselves develop the art or the skill themselves but they have developed a respect towards these arts so class six onwards every student will be having one vocational training as per his choice and like i have told you earlier there will be inquiry based learning so here mathematics and computational thinking will be given more stress not only this the rote memorization of various formulae or various theorems but here the various mathematical puzzles will be there various games will be there and various types of questions will be there puzzles will be riddles will be there so that they developed a proper temper towards solving various problems and it will be a joyful learning the classes will be enjoyable generally here we have seen people many students fear mathematics they just get scared when they just hear the name of mathematics no but it can be made very very interesting by the teachers by making them puzzles or by making in a musical way so it can be the mathematical puzzle can be given as a piece of music and thereafter the children can be asked to solve that and in this way the classes of mathematics can be made very very interesting and as i said coding is to start from the middle stage system because this is the required present day requirement we cannot side away from this so these are the present day requirements and our education system needs to be aligned with that. So there can be a 10 day bagless period during grade six and eight, 
where they can visit many places like they can visit carpenter gardeners art uh, pottery artists etc and even they can have intensive opportunities at some places so that they can earn the they can learn the skill and they can take various vocational courses online also so it is going to be introduced and by it is envisaged by year 2025 at least 50% learners shall be exposed shall have the exposure to vocational education and knowledge of india many people go to school learn many things but our knowledge towards our own country is found sometimes very very inadequate for example our ancient india was having a very very rich culture and its contribution to many fields mathematics science health etc has been recognized not only in india but outside the world also but we have got very very scant knowledge about that so we should take pride in our heritage and also we should take pride in our indian knowledge system for example there are many tribals tribal communities are there they have got their own tribal language they have got their own tribal knowledge system and they have got their own tribal medicine system or health system and they have got their own forest management system so we should know all these systems and then we can put those into use for example many tribal communities have many medicinal practices and those practices are being implemented by many organizations by multinational organizations even for example tulsi tulsi there are so many effects good effects of tulsi so it has been although it was there in our vedic structures vedic scriptures and ayurveda but nobody just takes note of that and some multinational companies have started producing medicines using tulsi so we should know that we should know our heritage and here the children should know this all these things our the knowledge of india that our country is a diverse country we have got a rich heritage we have got so many languages and we have got so many cultures and our even reading habits dressing habits etc change and this is what makes our country so great and ultimately we should have proper respect towards our constitutional values we should not only enjoy the con the fundamental rights given to us but also we should fulfill the fundamental duties then or then only we can be a responsible citizen so these things are to be inculcated inculcated in a student in the school itself so when he comes out of the school he becomes a good citizen because the ultimate of aim of education is to build a good citizen a good human being not only a person having knowledge so that is what our indian education system says and in this system the nep 2020 puts the guru in a very very pedestal of esteem it recognizes the contributions of the teacher so here the teacher is put on the pedestal of a great respect now health education as i said this is the 21st century subject health one should know how to keep a proper health and it can be a subject in the school also and not only a subject but in addition to the subjects they should know how to keep personal hygiene how to maintain good mental health and well being and how to keep the nutritional intact because many people are suffering 
from various nutritional deficiencies because they do not take the proper balanced diet and therefore one should be able to know what is the value of exercise what is the value of having a good balanced diet and all these things so that preventive health care is there so he remains healthy through his own exercise diet balanced diet and mindfulness exercises and everything so as i have repeatedly said ours is a multilingual country so it is seen that actually a child who takes who takes of learning in mother tongue or the language of the home and if the language of instruction in the school is different from the mother tongue then it may be a barrier it may be a barrier in the learning process but it can be overcome if proper exposure is given for example now for example english has become the international language so flexibility is given in the nap 2020 for the english medium school to continue their teaching learning process in the english medium only there is no embargo that the teaching learning process is to be done only in the mother tongue or in the regional language it can be as any language as per this choice of the school or as per the needs so although mother tongue can play a greater role but the teaching learning process as many years of experience has shown it can be learnt in other language also because as per the language critical hypothesis that is a child can learn a language up to a certain age in a very very efficient manner he can learn so many languages and he can speak and write so many languages seamlessly so there cannot be an embargo on learning any language so the teaching learning process can go on as per the choice of the school and a child can learn three languages one mother tongue and one national language or hindi or english or any language three languages as it is continuing now he can go on learning three languages now in order to obtain in order to achieve whatever has been am nbcs in the national education policy the ncert is going to form one national curriculum framework for school education and this national curriculum framework for school education is going to frame the curriculum it is going to prescribe and prepare textbooks for the schools so it is in process and it is also not very very there is no binding on this it will be also flexible so it will there will be a set of test books as per the requirement of the school as per the requirement of that region a teacher or the school can choose the books as per the need of the children and it is going to be formulated very soon and it is under process now aim of assessment as i have told you earlier the assessment is going to be a very very continuous one it is not only periodic assessment or it is not going to be only an annual phenomenon so it is going to be formative it is this assessment is for learning so that the skills that are required to be developed in a child those skills can be developed and he can go for higher order skills such as analysis critical thinking and conceptual clarity so there can be both assessment for learning and assessment of learning assessment for learning is that means whatever has been 
learned by the child, how he can improve that. That is assessment for learning. That means he can further his learning by this feedback system, by this assessment. And assessment of learning means whatever has been taught to the student, is it efficacious or not? So that the teaching methodology can be changed as per the requirement. If the child or the children are, are not able to grasp some concept, then the methodology can be changed so that the, the children can grasp the concept very easily. So this is a continuous process and it is to further the skills in the children. So as I have told you, there will be, there won't be any examinations up to class one and two, nursery class and one and two, there won't be any examinations. And the examinations will start from grade three, five and eight. So here also, there will be only testing of the core concepts. There won't be any assessment of the memorization level, only the concept. Information is not going to be tested. That is the core concepts. And there will be a pilot project by the CBSE. It is going to start in the year 2021. And after that, it will be put into use in 2022 and 23. So here the concepts, core concepts are going to change. And the test is mandatory for all schools, that is government and private. And here the data is anonymized. There is no public disclosure of individual data. That is the data is there. It is to only to uh, check. It is only to analyze whether the system is working or not. So this data can be given in an anonymized manner. The names of the children will not come, but it will only be data that is how many, how much, what is the percentage of children that has acquired the skills and what is the percentage that are, are not able to acquire the skills. So this way, so that the teaching and method, learning methodology can undergo a change. And this data can be put for continuous monitoring and improvement. So there will be test starting from grade three, grade five, grade eight, grade 10, and grade 12. So here there will be the application of knowledge. No just marking up and just reproducing. And report cards. So there will be 360 degrees holistic report cards. It is not only the academic aspect, but other aspects of the child also that will be brought in the academic cards. And here there will be a more rapport between the teachers, school and the parents. So in the parents and teacher meetings, the parents can be appraised about the various aspects of the children so that the parents can also pay, can also play a very, very effective role in the growth of the child. So the learning will be a subject inquiry based, then quizzes, role plays, etc. And there can be various types of assessment. For example, self-assessment. A child can assess himself in a very, very effective manner. For example, a child can say where he is lacking and where, what are the avenues where he can go. So first he will go, he will undergo his self-assessment. He will assess himself. That means where he is lacking and where he wants to go and what he wants to acquire. And there, peer assessment. So his friends are monitoring him closely. They mix him with closely, they observe him very closely. So peer assessment will be there so that his friends can say where he can improve, what are the fields where he can work very, very well so that he can concentrate on those aspects. And ultimately, there is assessment by the teacher. See, the teacher will assess the students individually 
and he will give feedback individually to all the students so that they progress as per their own requirement so it is always tailor made it is customized it is not one size for all so each student is given the due importance and the progress of each student is continuously monitored so there is no question of lagging behind if somebody is lagging behind then that much of emphasis will be given to him so that it comes to the mainstream and if there are some specially special children or children with some special needs slow learners then proper care should be taken as per the requirement with the help of the proper technology so that they acquire the knowledge they acquire the skills required as per the requirement of the class now the national assessment center for school education so this national assessment center for school education is working on the assessment patterns so what will be the assessment pattern now as per the nep 2020 so these are working on this and very soon an assessment pattern will come to the schools and the assessments will be done as per that now the most important factor is are the teachers well equipped to do justice to the nep 2020 the questions may be there in your mind. Yes, the NEP also says that the teachers are going to be trained for that. So there will be continuous professional teaching, professional, professional feedback. So there will be continuous professional teaching for the teachers also. So this is continuous professional development of the teachers also. So those who are aspiring to become teachers, the parameters are that one should have the four year integrated beard, the first one. He should have the four year integrated beard to come to the teaching profession. And it is going to be implemented by the year 2030. And those who are having already a specialized bachelor's degree in a specialized subjects, they can have two years beard. And those who are having already four year multidisciplinary bachelor's degree. So they can have one year beard. Now you must be wondering what is four years, four years bachelor's degree? Because now you are having three years bachelor's degree after 12th class, you go to the college for three years, then you get the bachelor's degree. But in 2020, NAP 2020, the graduation will be of four years. And the, it says that there is continuity of learning. So you can quit and come. So it will be, for example, in the graduation, if somebody does only one year graduation, then it will be gradu graduation certificate. If somebody only does two years, then it will be some type of graduate. If somebody does a graduate with three years, then he gets, gets the credit of graduate degree. If somebody does only two years, then that is diploma. If somebody does graduation only one year, that is graduation certificate. If somebody does graduation two years, that is graduation diploma. If somebody does graduation three years, then graduation degree. If somebody does graduation four years, then that is graduation research. So if somebody has got three years graduation, then he can go for the uh, jobs, the, the basic requirement of which is graduation. But if somebody wants to pursue post graduation and he has got four years bachelor's degree with research, then he will do only one year. So those who have got four years degree, four years graduation, that is research, then they can have one year beard and they can come to the field of teaching. So this is what is envisaged. And not only this, this will be national eligibility test. 
of the teachers and there will be continuous teaching continuous professional development of the teachers throughout various there will be around 50 hours of professional development of the children of sorry of the teachers so that they remain tuned to the present needs and in order to keep the teachers ready for their job national professional standards for teachers is going to be developed by the year 2020 and these standards are going to be implemented continuously and it is going to be achieved by the year 2030 and this policy is going to be revised in every 10 years so the standards will be set up first and thereafter every 10 years these standards are going to be revised so that the teaching so that the training of the teachers can be tuned to the needs to the present needs and there will be teacher eligibility tests in a periodic manner so that the teachers are properly attuned to the needs of the teaching learning process and the nep tries to support the teachers throughout the process so that from the type from the time of preparation from the to the recruitment then in the classroom and also in the professional development so never is a teacher lacking behind in his professional discharge of duties then one most important factor is infrastructure building so there are some schools where the infrastructure is very good they have got for example very good play playgrounds they have got very good laboratories so in this way there can be a cluster of schools so there can be exchange of students from one school to the other there can be exchange of teachers so the teachers can guest speakers can come to schools from the even the local luminaries can be invited to a school to take classes and the various infrastructures available in a particular school can be shared by the schools nearby so a cluster of schools can be built so that no school lacks behind for infrastructure laboratories computer labs etc and the children are given all the facilities as required by them and also there should be exchange of students from one school to the other there can be combined quizzes various events sports meets etc then cbse has taken various initiatives to implement this national education policy guidelines in the cbse schools I'll just briefly say some of the points initiated by CBSE. Now, the most important is that the standards building. So there will be a self-regulation or accreditatory system to see that the standards are being maintained by the schools. So there will be a state school standards authority or school quality assessment and accreditation framework the states are going to build all this so that whether the schools are met are going to meet various parameters like for example safety security infrastructure teachers intact or the ratio of the teachers as per the strength of the students financial probity sound governance various processes etc whether these standards are meeting the proper standards or benchmarks or not so there will be self assessment and also a body will be there who will be looking into this so that the schools maintain proper standards to impart education and cbsc is going to make self assessment tool for schools so that the schools are going to certify themselves that actually they are meeting the various criteria 
dictated by the NAP 2020, mandated by the NAP 2020 for impart of education. Then, as I have already repeatedly told about the competency-based education, competency-based various types of assessment. So, CBS is going to create a question bank. Some questions to test the competency level of students. So, it is going to create various question banks for various subjects. And it is going to not only issue to the schools, but also it will remain in the Jitsia platform for the benefit of the teachers and the students. And the pilot program of the test for class 3, 5 and 8, it is going to start during this year, that is 21 after the schools reopen. And after that, the other exams will be conducted like for class 3, 5 and 8 from the academic year 2022 and 23. Now, so various platforms are there from where these students can benefit a lot. The students can participate in various competitive or quizzes organized by CBSE. For example, Aryabhata Ganit Challenge. So it just increases the increases the inquisitiveness or the skill level of the students. Then Heritage India Quiz or EBSB activities, Ek Bharat Sarb Shrest Bharat activities. So you know various the heritage of India, then the diverse nature of India, what are the its strongest points, etc. Then CBSE Science Challenge, Science Exhibition, we can have various exhibitions at the school so that these children are given proper facilities and scope to do something on their own. Hello India, they will have, they will just have a flair, those who have got a flair for various games, so they can participate in various games, both collective games and also athletic events in Hello India. Then expression series, so the children will be given the proper avenue to express themselves on various topics. So they can speak in a debate competitions, they can write essays, they can write stories, they can write poems. So all these facilities will be given to the students so that they can express themselves. And then there is a reading challenge. So they can read and then their comprehension level is checked. So these are all the activities being conducted by CBSE to just uh, inculcate a habit of inquisitiveness in the children. So they want to acquire the knowledge and they, they can express themselves. So with this, I am going to end my today's presentation. Thank you very much for giving me a patient hearing. And I hope you must be having some doubts, some questions. And if you are having any questions, you are most welcome to contact our office and all your questions, all your doubts will be suitably answered. And you will be appraised on the various aspects of NAP 2020 as per your requirement. So thank you very much. Thank you for giving me a patient hearing. Thank you. Namaskar.